Macular degeneration is a leading cause of vision loss, with 15% of Americans being at risk or already affected. Scientific evidence proves that by using mesozeaxanthin, lutein, and zeaxanthin together replenishes the macular pigment and promotes healthier vision. This formula comes in only one product, MacuHealth. The premium kit for dry eye treatment. The premium choice for your patients. Introducing the Eye Doctor Plus, the hot and cold eye compress treatment kit, with antibacterial shield, washable cover and eyelid wipes. Visit 1-800-OPTI-SOURCE and type code open your eyes for a special promo. Hi, this is Dr. Kerry Gelb, host of the film Open Your Eyes, and today we're going to be talking about blue light. There's so much information now, and so much noise about blue light, we don't know which way to look. But today we have a very special guest, the CEO of Blue Tech. Nobody knows more about blue light than Greg Nace. So Greg, thank you for joining us today. Uh, thank you, Dr. Gelb, for having me. Uh, very excited for the topic. Well, I'm so excited to have you today. How many hours are kids now spending on a digital device? Oh, my goodness. Uh, probably if you count it after school and school time, you know, anywhere from 10 to 12 hours a day, as sad as that is. Wow, that's, re that's really something. And we know that from myopia studies, children that don't go outside and that spend time in front of a digital device are more likely to get uh, more nearsighted. Do you think that's one of the reasons why blue light is getting so much attention, or at least looking at digital devices, is getting so much news lately? Yeah, I definitely think uh, that's one of the reasons around myopia for sure. And, and as you mentioned, uh, you know, kids are glued to their devices 24 seven and you know, gosh, having kids, heaven forbid, you try to pry an iPad away from them before they go to bed. So uh, I, I definitely think it is. And um, not just the you know, how much you get from going outside to play, but just being trapped inside I and mean, so many health implications and bad things for kids. Because, you know, if you think about kids, um, a kid has just basically a naked eye with no protection whatsoever. So with that blue light emitting from the screens coming at them, um, you know, a lot of damage other than the lifestyle things that you mentioned. So about 65% of Americans report eye strain from digital devices, whether it's blurred vision, dry eyes, they get glare. They also get other problems such as headaches. Uh, they even get back pain. And we know that uh, there are sleep problems. Can you talk about circadian rhythm and how blue light affects circadian rhythm? Oh, sure. Absolutely. Uh, probably in its simplest way, and, and since I'm the champion of bad analogies, I'll say, you know, our core DNA as male and female is, as humans, is a caveman or cave women. In that, we wake up, we're supposed to get a little bit of light that kind of charges us or, you know, like lights the pilot light in your, in your stove or in your fireplace, and that takes us throughout the day. At night, we're supposed to go home to a pitch black cave, secrete melatonin, and get this deep, restful, rejuvenating sleep. That's the natural circadian rhythm that's in our DNA, you know, from thousands of years ago. And so, unfortunately, what's happening today when we're supposed to be going home to our pitch black caves, we go home, we fire up our laptops, flat screens, iPads, right up until the time we go to bed. The brain's confused. You know, should I be awake or should I fall asleep? And then even if you fall asleep, this is probably the critical point is even if you fall asleep and get that duration sleep, you don't get into a REM sleep or that dream state that you need to rejuvenate and repair all the you know, environmental damage that's hit you for the day. And so what this turns out to be is it starts the snowball, as they say often at UPenn, which is you know, I'm waking up in the morning, I may have had seven to eight hours of duration sleep, but I don't get that REM rejuvenating sleep. So then I start my stimulation process, coffee, caffeine, all of these things to make it throughout the day. And then I do the same thing to compound it. Flat screens, not a good night's rest and it compounds. And that's what leads to, you know, a lot of those chronic conditions um, that you talk about so well in Open Your Eyes. 
So how, what time frame do you think that people should stop looking at their digital device before sleep? Sure. I, I mean, at a bare minimum, about three hours before they actually, you know, set down to go to sleep. So give us the history of digital devices, you know, from the last 20 years when they first started to how would it, how it snowballed to today? Sure. Great question. Uh, well, what's interesting about this, uh, Dr. Gelb, is the history of lighting. We, we started not too many years ago with these incandescent light bulbs, and then they were everywhere. And then all of a sudden, there became this big initiative, we probably all heard about this, called Go Green, or the Greening of America and Greening Worldwide. Well, if you look at that in its most simple form, the issues that we're having today health-wise with lighting was really just an unintended consequence of the greening of America or the Go Green Worldwide Initiative. And specifically to your question about light, as a byproduct of Go Green, and to basically, you know, if you had a checkbox in front of you and said, the core thing of Go Green is cut our dependence on energy, check. Two, cut the light bill, right, or our electrical bills. In order to do that, we went from incandescent light bulbs to higher energy lighting that then translated to every digital device we have, cell phones, overhead lighting in the workplace, which is now mandated, by the way, uh, to computer screens, to television screens. Uh, and that's what really started this idea of blue light emitting device. So said more simple, on one hand, it's great. These are far more energy efficient light bulbs and overhead lighting than the older incandescent bulbs but the unintended consequence are all of these major issues that are being caused by blue light emitting devices. And, you know, I can certainly talk about the two major ones uh, when appropriate. Sure. Uh, you could talk about light bulbs. As, sure. as funny as it sounds, light bulbs are really important because it's the type of light that's coming off the light bulb. So if you could talk about the different types of light bulb and the different spectrum of light that comes out of the light bulb and oh, whether sure. it's, helpful for us or harmful for us in the long run? Right, no, good, good question. So, I mean, I could probably to simplify, can focus it on blue light a little bit. So if we're just without going crazy technical, if we think about it, the blue light that's being emitted or blue light in general from the sun, let's start there, is 400 to 500 nanometers, that's blue light. Now with that said, when we talk about light bulbs, what's coming inside, the sun emits the entire range, 400 to 500 nanometers. Our light bulbs and digital devices are really concentrated in a very narrow range. So, you know, again, without tech geeking it out a bit, it's really about 455 nanometers or a narrow sliver, probably plus or minus 10 nanometers that's coming off of these digital devices and light bulbs and things accordingly. Which, I mean, which if I may, it's really ironic when you peel the onion back, you know, I'll talk about this later for sure, if appropriate is the two major things, the major medical issues that blue light affects are our sleep, of course, as you know, very well. And the second are migraine headaches. Migraine is actually the, the number two worldwide most debilitating disease that's out there. And ironically, they've now identified the wavelengths, which are between about 447 and 467, i.e. right in the middle is what's coming off these light bulbs, digital devices that triggers and causes potentially migraine episodes. So said differently, green light, good for calming a migraine, blue light in that narrow band, what's actually coming off makes migraines worse. Talk about the difference between the light coming off a digital device and the sunlight when we go out in the morning? Sure, sure, great question. So, you know, in the la the sunlight has always been there. We often tell people, because we've been educated on blue light for a very long time, you really can't commingle the conversations. Before you start any conversation of any kind on blue light, you have to separate outdoor from indoor, because they are very different. As I mentioned, the sunlight, 400 to 500 nanometers, it's the full range, it's the most intense sun, the most intense blue light you can get. The challenge has become indoors, it's that very narrow band or 455. So you really can't commingle them to be fair, but 
But if you, if you did, you would say, okay, well, the sunlight has always been the same. It's intense, it's more intense than the lighting that's coming off your screens, no question. And it's a broader range, 400 to 500. The indoor is that kind of EKG look to it that spikes up in the center. But if you did bring them together in parallel net effect, you would say, we're looking at the sun maybe, you know, 20 minutes a day, 30 minutes a day, if we're fortunate, you know, from a normal work week. On computer screens, we're anywhere from eight hours to 15 hours a day. So the sun may be more intense. It certainly is, no question. But we're not looking at the sun, you know, eight to 15 hours each day. So maybe that happens. Oh, most people aren't outside, are they? No, no, and that's, that's another part of, that's really, really sad. So, you know, waking up in the morning and getting that red sun first thing is such a wonderful thing, as you well know, for health. So people are going and they're buying glasses with filtering, blue filtering uh, on their lenses. Some of the lenses have a little bit of color on it. Some of them are clear. Even in the drugstore, they have over-the-counter glasses now that have a filtering that they claim that have blue filtering. How do we know it's at 455, the really dangerous area coming off the digital devices that we're gonna be protected? Sure, yeah, great question. Uh, you know, there's a couple ways you can look at that. So there's, there's basically four ways you can block light, and I'll be brief, is, you know, one is a coating, which is something that you're alluding to. It looks like, you can look at someone's glasses and it looks like a bright blue is coming back at you, right? There's certainly these uh, more clear lenses, which I think you're referring to. And then on the polar end of the spectrum is these dark orange glasses that are out there, with, which they basically just take them and tint them, drop them in a dye like an Easter egg to get them ultra dark. And so if you look at the two spectrums, you would say the blue light AR and these clearer lenses, maybe with the exception of like Felix Gray, which is an online provider, but it, with the exception of that, their clear lenses really aren't touching 455 in any way. So maybe with the exception of Felix Gray, if I'm going into a drugstore, I'm looking at this, if the lens is completely clear, the chances are it's not gonna block much of anything at 455. Conversely, if it's a crazy dark lens over here, you know, unless it's made in, with a, a certain technology, you're going to block some of the blue, which is great, but you're gonna cause a massive color distortion whereby your work world is gonna be affected in a pretty big way. And as you mentioned earlier, your visual system can get messed up pretty badly. So really what we're looking at is some hybrid between the two, you know, enough color to where um, it's going to block a meaningful amount of that 455. But hopefully with using new, some of the newer technologies, we can block that blue without distorting color, most importantly. Now, I personally use your company, Blue Tech uh, filtering lenses. Uh, most of the time when I'm on when I'm on a screen, I'm not using them now because there's a reflection sometimes, and I want to make sure the audience can see me. But typically, I always use it, and I feel much more comfortable. I sleep much better. You talked about sleep. You talked about migraines. Can you give some of the studies and some of the statistics how blue filtering lenses? How much do we need to filter, and how does it help us with sleep? Does it help us 10%? Does it help us 100%? Where is it? How do people do according to the research? Sure, sure. And Dr. Gov, you really called out probably the critical thing. If you're at, you know, if you're at home listening to this and thinking about, you know, I, I'm a candidate, et cetera, is there really is not a correlation between, uh, at least let's talk about the medical conditions, sleep and migraine, which affects, you know, I, one in three people do not get enough sleep. And as I mentioned, migraines are second most debilitating disease that's out there. So we're really talking about 50% of the population would say, I don't get enough sleep or I get migraines. So under that context, um, when you're looking at this, there really isn't a correlation between the amount that it blocks and the actual impact. So one of the things that a consumer can do is make sure that whatever product you're buying can clearly illustrate an impact on those medical conditions. No different than Dr. Gelb, when you prescribe a drug, you know, or, or some type of something for your patients, you want to make sure you've read the studies to say, 
you know, if this patient has dry eye, this is going to make an impact on that. So there are studies that are out there on certain products that would, you know, double melatonin levels, improve your focus or cognition, and even quantify the amount of sleep that you will get. So just understand there's really not a correlation between filtration and actual impact on the medical condition of sleep or migraines. I see. Yeah, so that's probably one of the most important things we've learned just in the last 12 months, looking at different lenses that on one hand, you're thinking, wow, this blocks a lot. But then when it was tested, you know, in, in a real setting, it's not making much impact on melatonin or focus, you know, or that reduction in migraines. So uh, it's tough to put a hard, fast number on it is the short answer to your question. But we know some filtering certainly helps. And oh, the nope. studies are out there, to out there to prove it. And I thank you and your company for developing these lenses because it helps me sleep better oh, and it makes me have less eye strain when I'm reading, when I'm reading three hours before I go to bed. Oh, wonderful. wonderful. So that's, that's really what it's all about. It, you know, if I gave you a hard, fast number, I would just say if it's blocking less than 30% at 455, it's really not going to do very much for you. You know, it still is, there's really no correlation, but that might be a, you know, a rule of thumb that you can utilize just to say, in general, uh, you want to get to 30% or more blockage at 455. Visually, if you're a consumer, except for Felix Gray, if you're looking at it line of sight, if it's a clear lens, it's not really going to do much for you. Let's talk about kids. Like I said before, kids are up to seven hours a day on a digital device. That's, to me, that's horrifying. Yes. Talk about how we could protect our kids and what kind of filtering should we use? What kind of lenses should we use for them? Sure. So as far as kids go, I mean, I think you really nailed it. If you think about kids, they have no natural protection, as you know. The light is most intense to them because they have those naked, fragile eyes. In the classrooms, most schools, I don't know, you know about there, but here in Nashville, just about every school has gone from textbooks to tablets at the end of the day. So they're getting bombarded by it. The, the best that you can do, uh, and really for everyone, but especially kids, is make sure you have the maximum protection you can for kids, most importantly without distorting their color or messing with their visual system like, tint, like dark tinted lenses will do. And whether they have a prescription or not, just make sure they're wearing them every time they're in front of a digital device. So you know, maybe one thing that we've heard successful from many parents is they associate wearing their, you know, their glasses, their blue tech lenses or whatever, they, they tie them to the digital device. Meaning if you're going to look at, if Jimmy or Mary is going to look at, if your child's going to look at a digital device, make sure they put their glasses on first and they kind of go hand in hand. But that's something we've seen very successful, uh, you know, in the field and from feedback from parents. And then also giving the glasses to their kids to take to school, you know, because believe it or not, kids love glasses, and contrary to popular belief, and you see it as an eye doctor constantly. But, you know, I know when my son Dylan took his to school, he was the talk of the town. And, you know, it actually starts to resonate and you can somewhat cross educate the teachers at the same time. But there's a cool factor for it for kids. There's a peace of mind for parents and you couldn't pick a population that needs more protection than those naked fragile eyes of the under 18 crowd. The premium kit for dry eye treatment. The premium choice for your patients. Introducing the Eye Doctor Plus. The hot and cold eye compress treatment kit with antibacterial shield, washable cover and eyelid wipes. Visit 1-800-OPTI-SOURCE and type code open your eyes for a special promo. It gives you less eye strain and reduced damage caused by blue light. We like to call Vision Edge sunscreen for the eye. It all starts with your highest level of visual performance, only achievable through scientifically proven Vision Edge. Yes, I know with my son Brady, when he's on his doing playing his computer games, which I try to discourage, I always make sure he has his blue tech lenses. But when we were in Costa Rica and filming Open Your Eyes, uh, Dr. Prada, who is an optometrist in Costa Rica, a very well-known optometrist there, took a picture of Brady while he was on the cell phone, hunched over, looking at it. And he goes, look how close he is. That's, 
that's the problem. This is why myopia is increasing. Yes. So talk about some of the uh, careers, jobs, uh, demographics that where people are most at risk. Sure, sure. Um, great. Just, just if I may, what you, what you're talking about there, you know, in Costa Rica, a great thing for kids is certainly a plus 50 also, right? Cause we know they're going to go like this, but you know, uh, we do a lot of blue tech and plus 50, which uh, we have found a great thing. But uh, to your question, as far as jobs and functions that are really core with the, with the mandate to update lighting inside the workplace, it really is everyone. But with that said, for the sleep and the migraines, uh, just your garden variety, think about nurses or hospital staff. They're in some of the most intense lighting because they have to be, you know, with patients coming out and to be able to see, as well as those factory workers. We've done some work with some of the automotive plants and it's intense lighting to make sure you know, that they can get the right part on the right car, or do all the specialty work accordingly. But a lot of times by 3.30, their eyes are shot. They're worn down, borderline hemorrhaging, just from that intense lighting hitting them all day. So, you know, medical staff, office workers, goodness, you know, uh, I think we try to fight it as parents too. But gamers, those that are gaming at night in a pitch black environment with this blue light coming at you, I mean, really public enemy number one. So everyone is the short story that works in an office place. More intense would be hospital staff, administration that's there, um, intense work conditions where detail work is being done, uh, and certainly office environments, IT type of spaces where, you know, doing computer work, graphic designers, and more intense type of computer work. You're an expert on different types of lens materials, polycarbonate, Trivex. Uh, can you explain the different types of materials that people, when they go in to buy ophthalmic lenses, what would be best for them? What should they look for? Sure. Uh, it it kind of is the wild, wild west <laughs> when it comes to lens materials. Um, but I, I would say lens materials in general are a trade-off, right? So you'll see different terms like index of refraction and this, that, and the other. Um, from a quality level and with due respect to manufacturers, but just as a, as a benchmark, some of the very inexpensive lenses that are out there, which also have poor optical properties, potential you know, impact issues, and can cause color streaming and aberrations you know, that can mess up the visual system. Lenses like tack or acrylic, those are some of the least, least expensive, but also by far the least quality products that are out there. So that's kind of one grade for mass production. I, I assume that's probably some of these online lenses that people could buy glasses for 10 bucks or something. Sure, sure. You can, um, you can, Google, you can Google them and find them very easily uh, online. So no, no question about that. When you get into more of the optical quality lenses, you know, you're gonna start with a basic CR39 and work your way up to what they call high index. So as I mentioned, you're really trying to balance four things. Optics would be one. How clear uh, can I see out of the glasses? Weight, because that's important, right? We don't, glass is the heaviest lens that we have. Trivex is the lightest lens that we have. And then the other are probably around just the comfort things that are out there, right? Scratch resistant, safety for kids and impact. So to answer your question, probably the best all around lens material you could have for optics, scratch resistance, weight, and safety is Trivex. From there, you know, we're gonna probably go down to uh, from an optical standpoint, that, that CR39, but without getting in the weeds, I would say Trivex is probably by far the best when it comes to the overall lens. And as a sidebar to your kids' conversation, it's also, you know, impact resistant like polycarbonate and approved for kids. So, for, for example, so poly is great for impact resistant, but the optics are very poor. So when you get to your progressive wares or when your arms aren't long enough anymore and you need multifocal, that's not a good lens necessarily, you know, for a 40 plus crowd because of the aberrations and things accordingly. So Trivex short answer would be best all around. 
Now, I mean, people are driving, the average person keeps their glasses probably over two years. I think it's 2.8 years. So probably a good investment to get a good quality product. And, no question. You know, so uh, you're, you're gonna be using it all the time. You might be driving at night, you're watching TV. You probably don't want lenses that have a lot of aberrations. You want something with good quality. Correct. And, and, for, and for lenses for children, for safety, what, what would you recommend for them? Would it still be Tribex or would it be something else? No, I, for the best in optics and overall visual experience for kids, Tribex for sure. Um, for adults where maybe that's not as important, uh, probably purely optics, Tribex or your CR39 would be the best too. So let's go, let's shift back to uh, blue light and blue light lenses. How does, how does somebody know whether or not the lenses are absorbing at 455? Yeah, it, it's not easy, it, it, quite frankly. It's more, you know, knowing the brands and asking for help. We certainly, we didn't design this, but we Blue Tech have, have been the myth busters of blue light for, for quite a while. So, you know, reaching out, you know, for expert assistance to at least give you fact-based information, you know, we can give that to you. The other thing is, as a general rule, as I mentioned, except for that Felix Gray, most all of the clear lenses that you're going to find, and again, with due respect to who's offering them, your Warby Parkers and several people like that, wonderful establishments, but if the lens is clear, chances are it's not blocking much of anything at 455. Mm -hmm. So ask for help, look visibly at the lens with that caveat I mentioned from the, from the Felix brand is, Look at the lenses, and if they're clear, that's a pretty good indication they're not going to do much for you, right? So the next topic is a little controversial. There is some research to show that the blue light coming off the digital devices affect the, the cells in the back of the eye. Sure. They, could, they could damage the photoreceptors. They could damage some of the cells in the back of the eye. Talk about some of that research. Sure. There's a lot out there. I, I would say just basic research that's out there is, you know, we've all heard as consumers for a long time about UV light and blue light and, you know, suntan lotion for your skin. So in its most basic form, if you think of macular issues or macular degeneration as a full-blown disease, you know, the macula is in the back of the eye, right? So UV light, most of it gets stopped by the front of the lens anyway, so it never even gets back to the macula. But blue light is the highest energy light that gets back to the macula itself and can speed up the damage or, you know, I've heard a lot of people, as I'm sure you have, refer to macular degeneration as nothing more than a gradual lifelong rusting, like a rusty car in the back of the eye. Well, from a light standpoint, Blue light is definitely the highest energy light that gets to the back of the eye that can damage the macula over time. So I think, you know, there's certainly many studies that would tell you, you know, macular cellular damage can be affected by blue light, macular damage in general. Um, I don't think it's fair to say that, you know, if you, blue light being the only thing that it causes macular degeneration, but I think there's no question from a light standpoint, controllable light standpoint, if you want to protect your macula, you need to protect against blue light. And, you know, the, the human has, in the back of the eye, has this pigment that absorbs the blue light. Now, some people don't have enough pigment back there because of their diet. They're not eating enough dark green leafy vegetables or taking uh, supplements that have lutein and zeaxanthin in it. So they're not getting that pigment back there. So can the filtering lenses help as being an extra protection against the blue light for, and to protect the back of the eye? Oh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, just think of it. it. I mean, it's your front end shield, right? Against the damage that can come through. And it's coming off a device, right? You know, right into your eyes there at the same time. So absolutely. And it's probably the easiest by far method that you can take from a convenience factor is, you know, whether you have a prescription, whether you wear contact lenses, you can put, I have non-prescription Bluetech on, whether you have a prescription, you can get, you know, Bluetech in it. So, I mean, I think uh, it really is the first line of defense and by far the easiest line of defense 
to either replace that need that you just mentioned, you know, or provide an extra protection. protection. What should patients ask their doctors or their opticians about how to buy these type of lenses? Sure. I, I think from a doctor's standpoint and opticians, the questions that should be asking to the public and maybe, you know, the consumer coming in is the serious things on blue light. There's two functional questions. Do I get enough sleep? And do I have migraines? I don't know about you, I know a lot of people that have migraine headaches or episodes and various things. So if you're coming in, not getting enough sleep and having migraines, you know, you can, you can present that yourself to help the optician and the doctors find the right solution. Conversely, and we talked with a big ophthalmologist recently who shared this story, and his commentary was from an optician and doctor standpoint is, if we're talking about sleep or migraines, just like a drug, the only thing I'm gonna prescribe is something I can prove makes an impact in that condition. So I would say doctors and opticians know your product, especially for that 50% of the population that doesn't get sleep or migraine, you know, that gets sleep problems or migraine headaches. So know what is actually medically correct to make the impact, not marketing correct. And conversely, consumers coming in knowing that those are the two main conditions that can be improved. So I, I think it's a two-way street to answer your question. When consumers are looking to buy frames, I know frames aren't your main business, but you do know quite a bit about it. What should they be looking at when they're looking to buy a quality frame? Sure. Um, you know, certainly without any nickel, you know, nickel is a, is a, is a corrosive something in the frame. So I think, Part of its personal preference, there's certainly a style element to it, but as important, comfort, because you're going to be more likely to wear a frame that's comfortable versus not. So there's a lot of frames that are out there that you know are ultra lightweight, titanium or stainless steel material. Those might be a good way to go. Just from a wearer standpoint, if you um, if you're like me and have a funny shaped nose, you know the ones with the nose pads sometimes will dig into your nose. So maybe consider a xyle frame or a plastic frame that doesn't have nose pads. So I would say it's comfort and fashion, but there's certainly materials you can think about when you're coming in that are going to be make the wear more comfortable, whether you're Plano non-prescription or full prescription glasses. So, so Cliff notes, I'd look for material in frames of stainless steel or titanium. If you have problems, you know, with if you've worn them in the past and they dig in and you want more comfortable, maybe a plastic frame, you know, might be good. And uh, I think just focusing on that and spending a little extra time to try them on and make sure they fit comfortably before you leave the office. Because there's a lot of things a good optician can do to adjust those frames, you know, to make your day life much easier. You know, opticians go to school, to, you know, they do apprenticeships to learn about helping people pick out frames. I think picking out a frame online and just being sent a frame rather than having a professional help you, if you could comment about that. Sure. I think, um, you know, there really is no substitute at the end of the day for a professional fit. You know, a professional comprehensive eye exam that looks at everything, just as you mentioned so well, you know, and open your eyes is so many things that you can detect with a proper examination. Same with opticianry, you know, a good trained certified optician, because some are not, certified optician can certainly help you in selection, can help you in fit, instead of the hassle of having to bring stuff in and send them back. So I think online is certainly evolving. There's some companies that are online that do a wonderful job, you know, of getting you things and spotting you up using technology. But I, you know, it's like anything else. You've got one set of eyes, right? So you want to make sure whatever you're putting on there fits properly. So I don't think there's really a replacement for a professional uh, certified optician. And how important is to make sure the centers, the optical center or the PD lines up properly for comfort? Yeah, it's, uh, I mean, it's most important when you're 40 and over, right? So for progressive wares, if you think about it as, you know, a progressive viewing area is much like an hourglass in a lot of ways. And, you know, you're pointing your nose and turning your head to see objects. So that placement of the pupillary distance or PD is essential. 
So I'd say it's essential for your 40 plus. You know, it's certainly nice to have in your mid to upper prescriptions as well, you know, for single vision or one power lenses. So uh, fit is always a critical thing, you know, at the end of the day for, for your multifocal lenses and certainly higher prescription single vision. Well, I want to thank uh, Greg Nace for joining us today. He's a wealth of knowledge about lenses and, and filtering of, of lenses to protect people's eyes. He's the CEO of Blue Tech. If somebody wants to get in touch with you or wants to be able to buy your lenses from a, from a distributor, how could they do that, Greg? Sure. First, thank you very much for having a really exciting topic. Probably the easiest way uh, on consumers is just, just send us one email and I'll just spell it out if I may, uh, because we do spell blue tech without an E. So that often causes confusion. So I would just send one email uh, to info, I-N-F-O, at, and let me spell blue tech again. It's B-L-U, no E, T-E-C-H, lenses, L-E-N-S-E-S dot -E -E com. And you can also go to our website and, you know, there's a wealth of information there also, but info at bluetechlenses.com. Just send us an email with where you are and any challenges that you might be having, and we can certainly get you to the right place. Well, thanks for joining us today, Greg. I really, really appreciate it, and I appreciate you sharing your knowledge with us. Yeah, thanks for having me, Joe. The premium kit for dry eye treatment, the premium choice for your patients. Introducing the Eye Doctor Plus, the hot and cold eye compress treatment kit, with antibacterial shield, washable cover and eyelid wipes. Visit 1-800-OPTI-SOURCE and type code open your eyes for a special promo. Since I bought Safe For You, my dad makes me clean his boat. It's natural y es un buen producto. Every time I go back to school, my mom always makes sure that I have my Safe For You products. I like to bring extra, and my roommates certainly don't mind. It's a good thing I had safe for you to clean up after this little guy. When my hands get dry, I like to wash them with safe for you. And most importantly, the reason why I buy safe for you is because it's safe for me and you.